Hey guys, it's Meal Before Me, and I'm back with another food review. This time we're checking out Green Chef. It's a sustainability focused meal kit service where you choose the recipes and they deliver the fresh ingredients to make it. According to them, they were the first meal kit company to be certified CCOF organic. They operate at both a carbon and plastic offset, and they have some number of weekly menu options suiting a range of dietary needs, including keto, vegan, gluten-free, and more. Now, I say some number of options because the website isn't consistent. In one place, it says to choose from 30 weekly recipes. In another place, it says to choose from all 46. And in another place, it says to choose from 50 plus. So all I know for a fact is that you get to choose from some number. They provide hero discounts for first responders, medical professionals, teachers, and military. And they have registered dietitians you can chat with for nutritional advice, with the first 20 minute session being free at the time I'm recording this. Full disclosure, Green Chef is owned by HelloFresh, which I found out after placing my order. Because I was also going to review Every Plate, another service owned by HelloFresh, when I noticed their website is exactly the same as Green Chef's. So I looked into that, and it turns out HelloFresh acquired Green Chef back in 2018. So for anyone curious, the HelloFresh group owns HelloFresh, Green Chef, Every Plate, Factor, Chef's Plate, which is based in Canada, and You Foods based in Australia. Anyway, since the planet is on fire, I wanted to steer clear of having pre-made meals delivered for a while, so I'm excited to try a new meal kit. And as always, I'm going to walk you through everything from ordering and the unboxing to my taste test in real time. To get started, I went to greenchef.com. Like I mentioned in all these reviews, most meal kit companies offer a discount right on the homepage. In this case, it's $229 off your first nine boxes, which doesn't sound like a good deal when that much money is what you're saving. I'd stick to percentages, but maybe that's just me. There was also a mystery offer at the top, so I clicked that and it gave me the option to enter my email address to get 50% off and free shipping, then 20% off for two months. They're doing too much here, okay? So I declined the mystery offer since the current offer looked to be the same anyway and clicked get started. First, you choose your preferences from categories like Mediterranean, Calorie Smart, Quick and Easy, Plant Based, etc. These preferences don't lock you out of anything on the menu, they just determine which recipes you're shown first. Then you select your plan. You can choose two, four, or six people, and either three or four meals, which is notably low compared to other services where you can choose six, eight, or more meals per week. As usual, me and myself are the only ones reviewing this, so I chose two people, and I want to try as many recipes as I can, so I chose four. That brought me to $6.50 per serving with a discount, which is around what I usually spend on these reviews. Next, you sign up with your email and password, then move on to entering your mailing address and payment information. You can provide delivery instructions for the driver as well at the bottom of the page. Now I want to say something before we continue, and you can skip to the next chapter if you want to keep things moving. One thing I've complained about with meal kit companies is how many of them use this model where you have to enter your payment info before you can pick your meals. And a lot of people share similar complaints about having limited or no access to the menu before handing over their details. But I've seen them get pushback from those who say you can always see the menu before you register, you just aren't reading or trying hard enough to find it, and it's misinformation to say it isn't there. So I wanted to clarify my position. When I review these services, I'm also reviewing the ordering process, and that includes the user experience with the website. The link to the menu should always be prominently featured, but sometimes companies design unique landing pages for campaigns where the menu is either buried or non-existent because they're directing you to a specific promo. So it isn't true that the menu is always there. Sometimes you have to exit the promo pages to go searching for it. More importantly, even when a link to the menu is there, viewing the menu outside of your order is very different from viewing the menu while in it. Using Green Chef as an example, it's great that I can see the options for this week when I visit the website, but I can't see the prices, I can't filter or sort them, I can't keep track of the ones I'm interested in except in my head or by jotting them down, and without picking a plan, I wouldn't know how many meals I should be considering anyway. In some cases, I also wouldn't know if everything I'm seeing would be included in my plan. All of that influences your choices, which is why being able to browse the menu before you've done anything isn't a substitute for doing it while placing an order. And when you're placing an order, there's no reason outside of data collection and marketing to require entering your payment details first. 
So far, the total cost of my first box is $51.96, thanks to the discount and free shipping. Now you can see the delivery date and time by scrolling down. I'm placing this order on July 23rd, and it defaulted to Friday, July 28th for delivery. I like getting these reviews done as quickly as possible, so I always choose the earliest delivery date I can, except in this case, Friday doesn't work. Luckily, I can change the delivery date for my first box by clicking edit and selecting the new date from the calendar. See how easy that was, Factor? The delivery window is 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. I can't change it, but the fact that they have that drop down makes me wonder if there are situations where you can. It's also worth noting that their FAQs say deliveries are made from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday, but their drivers will try to deliver before 5 p.m. if you're using a commercial address. Finally, we get to the fun part, picking the meals. As always, they pre-select your meals based on your preferences, so I'm going to edit them. You can filter the menu by vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, Mediterranean, protein-packed, keto, adventurous eats, gut and brain, calorie smart, quick and easy, and lunch, which is oddly non-specific. Clicking a meal shows you its nutritional values and the ingredients they provide, as well as what you'll need to make it. Some meals give you the option to swap out your proteins, like this turkey salad, while others have optional add-ons, like including keto-friendly snickerdoodles with these tenderloins. Just pay attention to the prices when swapping and adding, because the additional cost is per serving. There are also meals labeled Chef Select, which are premium recipes, whatever that means. I've yet to review a service where paying extra for the premium choices seemed worth it for what you get, but that's up to you. Then there are the bundled options where you can order a combo that includes breakfast and lunch or brunch, etc. The cost is 20, 30, nearly $40 per serving for some of these bundles, and that's way too rich for my blood. But if you've got money to burn, you may find them convenient. And they say the produce and eggs are organic for all of the meals on the menu, so they'll notify you if they have to substitute a non-organic ingredient. Anyway, at first glance, the menu looks good, but four meals is very limited, both for the sake of this review and if you want a weekly option that actually provides enough meals for the week. And I'm sure Green Chef is aware of that, given that they slapped a notice right at the top that you could add more meals to the box. Only the extra meals won't receive the discount. Just for you, I am going to add a fifth meal since the price still falls within my comfort zone. But I have to be honest, after trying Cook Unity, I'm feeling the lack of variety here. To go from hundreds of pre-made meals to a few dozen recipes I'll have to cook feels like something is lacking. There are tons of flatbreads and salads, meals that feel more like appetizers than something I'd eat for dinner. And the ones that catch my eye are chef selects, which means spending more. So I looked at the next two weeks and going back and forth between the menus, I finally settled on five meals from the third week. Truffle linguine with chicken, maple barbecue meatloaf, Greek spiced pork and eggs, honey mustard chicken and cheddar wraps, and Cuban chicken with chimichurri. I also grabbed an add-on for you vegans out there, a side of orange maple miso sweet potatoes. It costs $7.99 and it says it's enough for four servings. After picking the meals, I had a new problem. I couldn't skip the first week's menu and the promo had the next two weeks locked in at 20% off, not 50. So I contacted Green Chef's customer service through live chat and they moved my promos forward. My first box from the Tastier menu will now be arriving on August 12th and I'll still be getting 50% off with free shipping. That brings my final total with the fifth meal and vegan add-on to $71.94. Future Me will be back for the unboxing. In the meantime, if you enjoy my food reviews and want to see more of them, please like this video. Like it. It tells YouTube that my channel is worth sharing and I want to grow it so I can afford to bring you more reviews you'll love. The package arrived by FedEx on August 12th as scheduled. Green Chef provided a tracking number, but I wouldn't trust the times. It estimated it would arrive between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. while it was out for delivery, but I didn't get it until about 4 o'clock. The box was 18 pounds, measuring 16 by 15 by 14 inches. And inside you have the recipe cards that are color coded to match their meals on top of an insulated liner made from Climacel, a plant-based material. Opening it up, each recipe is in its own bag and underneath is the proteins for the meals and two non-toxic gel packs. The packs were still frozen, just with some condensation on the outside, and the proteins were super cold. You might even be able to see the frost on this one, so temperature wasn't an issue. By the way, for anyone curious, since I started this channel, I haven't gotten rid of a single gel pack. Waste not, want not. Now, notably, there's something missing here. The orange miso sweet potatoes. I got an email a week earlier that it wouldn't be available due to supplier issues, so they refunded the cost. Sorry, vegans, I tried. 
But enough with the unboxing, because you know the question on all our minds is, how does it taste? And as usual, I didn't eat yet, so let's get these meals cooked. To the table! Since this is a meal kit, I'm checking the ingredients for each recipe before making them and breaking out the scale. My 11 inch dinner plate we all know and love is back to give you an idea of what the portion sizes look like. And as always, I'll be rating each recipe by taste, smell, texture, and repeatability, meaning would I eat it again? First up is the Greek spiced pork and eggs. It comes with one bell pepper, one yellow onion, one Roma tomato, one pack of concentrated stock, four eggs, paprika, garlic, and oregano, sour cream, feta cheese, 10 ounces of ground pork, and 2.75 ounces of kale. The website mentions you needing things like salt, pepper, and oil, but the recipe card lists tools as well, including a thermometer. It's the first time I've seen a thermometer listed as a need in one of these kits, but it wasn't actually required anywhere in the recipe, so I think it's just a suggestion. Shwacha! Now, I chopped the tomatoes a lot chunkier than you probably would for something like this, but that's because I do not like raw tomatoes on top of things. So I figured if I have to have it now, you know what, I might as well just go all in and have the biggest chunks imaginable. Um, but this is the end result. So it's the seasoned ground pork and kale on the bottom. And then I topped it with two fried eggs. And again, with the eggs, it says to fry it to your liking. I think in the recipe picture, it looks a little bit more sunny side up or just a little bit runnier. I hate runny eggs. It's just a texture thing. So mine is completely solid. And then you're supposed to top it with the feta and sour cream mix. Now, as a reminder, my recipes were two servings. So for each one of these dishes I'm showing you, this is one serving. So let's get the first ranking out of the way. Uh, five out of five for smell. It has a really nice herbiness to it, but also there's this kind of tang from the feta cheese that I can smell coming through, which I wouldn't think that I would like, but it does add a little bit of dimension to this. So like I said, five out of five for whiff. Now for the other rankings, we're actually gonna have to dig in. So I'm just gonna cut in. Oh, I should cut like right through the middle. Whoopsie. Hello, well, you know, that was messier than I intended. Um, but here we go. Like, this looks so much better just kind of opened up like that, but that was very satisfying to cut into. And you can tell that I didn't, you know, like kind of overcook the eggs. It, they're still a little bit soft in the yolk. Um, see if I can show you that. Like you can, maybe you can, maybe you can see that. They're still a little soft in the yolk. So I'm gonna try to get a little of everything and have my first bite. I'm excited because I didn't eat today and I'm hungry. All right, here we go. Well, that's really good. I'm gonna keep eating this because this is my meal for right now as I talk. Uh, but yeah, that's actually very good. The pork is very well seasoned. There were three packs of the same thing of like that one spice blend. I used all three packs. And you know, when you're following these recipes, again, since the recipes are a part of what I'm judging, it's always important to pay attention to when they say like, do something for X minutes or until X, Y, Z, because I often find the length of time that these things quote is never enough. Like for example, I think it says something like three to five minutes to really brown the pork. You know, I ended up cooking this a lot longer than the recommended time because I really wanted a very nice browning on the meat, but this is delicious and it actually blends very very well with everything. I can taste a little bit of the onions. That tang from the feta is kind of brightening it up a little bit. And happily, neither the tomato nor the kale are destroying the experience for me, which is nice. So I'm gonna say that we're starting off very good with a five out of five for flavor. For texture, I'm also going to give it a five out of five. Everything is perfectly cooked. I know that's a little bit trickier because I'm the one who cooked it. And you know, the recipe said like, hey, judge certain things for yourself, but I'll still give the recipe credit because of the order of the steps and you know, how they recommended you actually cook each component to achieve this texture. So I'm very pleased with this five out of five. I don't really need to tell you what the next thing is gonna be. For repeatability, would I eat it again? Absolutely. This is so good. I mean, we're off to a really good start with this already, like five out of five across the board. That does not happen often. So let's see if the other four recipes can measure up. Next is the truffle linguine with chicken. It comes with garlic, an Italian herb and red pepper blend, truffle butter, creamy mushroom broth, 2.5 ounces of peas, four ounces of cremini mushrooms, six ounces of linguine, 
and 10 ounces of chicken strips. I'm not mentioning how much things weighed on my scale because the weights listed so far have been accurate. And if it hasn't been clear in the past, I do take the weight of the packaging into account. Check this out. <laughs> I feel like I say that all the time, but I just love like plating this, even if it doesn't look that great. It's still, like I've said before, looks better than it would on a circular plate. Uh, but this, I have to say, looks like the biggest and feels like the biggest serving so far. Now I will say one thing about this. This was supposed to be chicken strips and it said chicken strips on the package. It was not strips, okay? Like it was more like minced chicken. Like these little bits that you see, I did not cut it like that. That's like how it actually was in the package. So I don't know what happened here for this to be strips. Uh, I would call these nuggets at the very best, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> I just thought I would point that out, especially because the instructions do say like, oh, cut the strips into whatever sizes if you need to. And I'm like, well, considering that this came kind of minced, I don't need to cut anything, but that's not why we're here. We're here to try it. So I'm gonna jump right into the ranking here. I'm giving this a five out of five for whiff, and it's absolutely because of the truffle. I can smell that black truffle butter, and I feel like that's all I smell. I mean, I do smell a little bit of peas as well. <laughs> and you know, I love peas. Uh, maybe the mushroom is coming through a little bit. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be one of those situations where the herbs add more to like the sauce than they do to the actual meat. So I feel like the star of the show is gonna be mushrooms, but you know, let's not speculate. Let's eat you late. So <laughs> let me just dig right on in there. And I hope you can see the creaminess of it, but let's go ahead and have my first bite. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is gonna be an easy one. For texture, I'm gonna give it a five out of five. The pasta is, you know, that perfect balance of softness, but a little chew still left to it. The mushrooms, they are nice and kind of crisp and held together. Like everything texture wise has a nice chew to it. So five out of five for texture, absolutely. Um, the peas are also great. For flavor, it's really good. Uh, you know, the herbs do have a little bit of red pepper flakes or something in there. So it has a tiny bit of heat to it. In this case, I would say the heat does not add anything to it. Um, it just adds heat, but I don't feel like it enhances the flavor. So, you know, I'm gonna give it maybe a four out of five for flavor. This chicken really just tastes like, you know, I seasoned it with salt and pepper. It doesn't really taste like the herbs that, you know, I put on it. So I would say that relative to everything else, the chicken, if you eat it by itself, might taste a little bland. But the other reason for that likely is the fact that, you know, for the recipe, you were supposed to top everything with the chicken after you cooked it, rather than folding it into the sauce and everything, like, which is what I personally would have done, like if I were just making this for myself and not for a review. Which brings me to the last ranking, repeatability. Would I eat it again? Absolutely, yes. I think this is great. It's also filling. And like I said, you know, this is a pretty big serving. Like this again is one half. So this for me personally, like I can't sit here and eat all of this in one meal. <laughs> so this for me is gonna probably be more like three or four servings, not two servings. So I would definitely get this again because it's delicious. It's easy to make. And I think you really get your money's worth with this. So, you know, good job so far to Green Chef, but <laughs> we gotta move on. Up next is the Maple Barbecue Meatloaves. It comes with two carrots, one yellow onion, one egg, almond flour, dried cranberries, maple balsamic barbecue sauce, a barbecue spice blend, 10 ounces of ground beef, and four ounces of Brussels sprouts. yup up 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 Ah. I think this might be one of my favorites so far in terms of plating, just because I like all the color. <laughs> now, the first thing I want to get into before I even talk about this is that the recipe said to cook this at 425 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes or whatever it was, or until cooked. Me personally, I think that at 425 degrees, like meatloaves this tiny, I think that's kind of overcooked. I feel like that's gonna be very dry, um, but we'll see. Also, I tend to want to like rest my meat and none of these recipes really call for you to rest any of the meat. You just sort of cook it and then immediately eat it. Uh, so anyway, getting into the ranking for whiff, I mean, <laughs> maybe a two out of five. You know, I guess I can kind of smell a little bit of the sweetness coming off of the cranberries. 
but for everything else, there really isn't a lot happening here that's very aromatic, um, very spicy. And speaking of spice, that barbecue blend, the recipe did say, hey, use this amount or if you're sensitive to heat, you know, just like use less or don't use it at all. And I don't like stuff that's very, very spicy. So just in case, I did actually just taste the spice blend by itself to see how much I should use. I'm not gonna say it was super hot, but it was definitely the kind of heat that for me doesn't add anything. It actually just takes away from the food because it starts to make my mouth feel numb. So I ended up using maybe half of the packet. I felt like that was gonna be fine for me. For the fun part, the actual taste, I'm gonna just take the carrot first because carrots are one thing that you know can be very crunchy and if you've been watching my channel for a while you know that I don't like crunchy vegetables I like my vegetables to be kind of soft that's good that's like right on the cusp of where I like it to be and I'm gonna take this little end piece here like you see how this like the bottom is shining right that's because there is like moisture there you see how the top is not shining that's because to me this is probably dry that is not what my meatloaf looks like when I cook it, like according to my specifications. So I'm a little worried about that, but let's just uh, taste the flavor first because I could be wrong. Hmm, I'm pleasantly surprised by that. So for texture, that's actually quite nice. And I don't know if it's like the almond flour or what, but there was something interesting about the texture that's like not normally, um, I don't know, something I would associate with a meatloaf. I don't want to say mealy because that would make it sound gross. So I am going to give this a five out of five for texture and for flavor. The meatloaf itself is well seasoned, which is interesting because there wasn't really that much seasoning to it, even to the point where I think that if I had dumped in all of whatever that spice blend was, um, it would still be fine because I don't taste any heat. It's the glaze that I really like, this maple balsamic glaze. I'm not a fan of maple flavored things, but I love balsamic anything pretty much. <laughs> and again, like with the vegetables, I get a little bit of sweetness from the dried cranberries, but you know, it just tastes like good sauteed vegetables, you know, cause it you didn't really add anything extra to it. It is just flavored by itself, by the Brussels sprouts, by the onion, by the carrot and by the cranberries. So it has a very clean kind of fresh taste to it. So definitely for flavor, five out of five, which means that for repeatability, would I eat this again? Absolutely, uh, this is delicious. A lot of these services I review, like when they have just kind of a meat and then a big side of vegetables, it's usually the vegetables that disappoint me and make me not want to get that recipe again. Here, I think it came together really well in a way that just is nice and tender to eat and also just has a really nice flavor. So I'm very much a fan of this. I like, I wanna say Green Chef has been nailing it so far. We've had what, two recipes I think that are fives across the board, but we gotta move on. Next, we have the Cuban chicken with chimichurri, which is basically chopped up herbs in oil with maybe vinegar or lemon. It comes with one bell pepper, one yellow onion, chimichurri with avocado mayo, pepitas, which are pumpkin seeds, snap peas, a Cuban spice blend, cotija cheese, 2.75 ounces of cabbage, and 10 ounces of chicken cutlets. Bloop. Oh, wow. <laughs> I got a huge whiff of that cheese as soon as I put that past my face. All right, well, maybe that's a sign that I should just start immediately with a ranking and say that for a whiff, uh, I don't know what that was. Wait, let me smell it. Oh yeah, no, you know, <laughs> wow, that genuinely just hit me out of nowhere. So I'm gonna give it a two out of five and that's just because that cheese is a little stinky. It's a little stinky for my taste and it's pretty much all I can smell. But as you can see, basically the recipe was to cook the veggies and then to cook the chicken, slice the chicken, put it on top and then drizzle it with the chimichurri and then sprinkle on the cotilla, the cotilla cheese, however you pronounce it. Um, so that's what I did. Now it said that you could drizzle on as much as you wanted. So I drizzled on half um, and then the other half is with the other serving. So again, in case I didn't mention it for the last review, for the last uh, meal, this is one serving that I'm showing you, okay? I'm always in this video showing you just the one serving. So let's just dive into this immediately. I do, again, love the color. There's cabbage, and I've said before that I'm a fan of cabbage pretty much in anything usually, so um, I'm gonna just get some chicken. And snap peas, like I hate snap peas, so <laughs> 
and it's a texture thing i just i don't like it but i'm gonna start with this i think i have a piece of chicken some cheese some of the chimichurri and then this stupid snap pea said oh well you know what it's gone it didn't like that i insulted it so you know what then you don't have to be a part of the first bite <laughs> okay so let's try this out Mm-hmm. okay i really like that i can officially say this has been my favorite well my hand looks crazy i can officially say this has been my favorite so far because of the balance of different flavors. And there was actually a blend on the chicken itself. That as well comes through really nicely. Like everything, I think it just, it complements each other and it sort of elevates it. So this is gonna be my favorite five out of five <laughs> for flavor out of the whole video. For texture, I'm going to say that everything is cooked really well. The chicken is very tender um, and the veggies are very, very good. Like the one thing I was concerned about was the snap peas. I just don't like the fact that they exist. <laughs> so I don't know, uh, should I knock it down for that? No, I'm gonna give it a five out of five for texture. I think everything was perfectly cooked. Not only would I get it again, this might be one of those types of recipes where, you know, whenever I see it on the menu, I would make sure I add it. Like that's how much I like this one. So this has been kind of an overwhelming success and really that cheese, I think the chimichurri and the cheese kind of elevate everything. Like those two things, like this is just great. You know that you have something that tastes good when you're eating and you start doing this, you know, you start trying to scrape up every little bit of juice. That's when you know that something is really good. This is that good to me. I really, really enjoy this. So this has been a really positive experience so far, but it's time to move on. Finally, we have the honey mustard chicken and cheddar wraps. It comes with dried cranberries, one apple, two flour tortillas, honey mustard mayo, cabbage and carrots, pecans or pecans, sharp cheddar, 5.75 ounces of lettuce, and eight ounces of fully cooked chicken breast. It's labeled as a 10 minute lunch and there's no cooking involved, just putting everything together. In fact, because there was no cooking, I decided to assemble it at the table. here we go the final result that was incredibly messy and i should say this is one wrap cut in half and as usual all of this is just supposed to be one serving you know one thing i will say is i do like that they try to have you do double duty with ingredients with wraps where it's like hey we'll have you put the stuff in a wrap but then we'll also have you not put the stuff in a wrap and pretend like that's different it's not it's just this <laughs> This inside of that or not inside of that. That's what the difference is here. Um, except that, you know, for the salad part, you were supposed to use the, you know, the apples. The apples weren't actually for inside the wrap. So I guess that's a little bit of a difference. But this did take like 10 minutes for me to just, you know, uh, chop everything up and then dump it all together. So I'm gonna give it a one out of five for whiff. Like you barely smell anything, especially because these are kind of like um, cold, fresh ingredients that nothing is cooked. You know, it's not going to have as much smell to it as something that has been put through heat. Um, but let's go ahead and actually taste it so we can see what the texture is like. Because again, you know, with um, the carrots and things having not been cooked, texture is going to be a big deal for me. I don't like wraps, generally speaking, and I don't like crunchy vegetables like I've mentioned before. So this is something that I normally probably would not eat, but um, I'm going to see if I can at least pick up the wrap. Maybe without everything falling out. No, nope, I said I said without everything falling out and you're already trying. Okay, here we go. Itadakimasu. Yeah, I mean, it's a chicken wrap, <laughs> you know? It's not that this is bad. It's just not something that I personally would like go somewhere and buy because um, it's just not my thing. Let's jump into the rankings. Sorry, <laughs> I'm like talking with food in my mouth. Speaking of which, if you've noticed that in some of my videos, like when I get to the part where I'm actually, you know, testing the food, that it seems like I cut away really quickly from the actual eating part. It's because I cannot stand the sound of chewing. So when I go to like take a bite of the food, I'm sitting there chewing and tasting for a lot longer <laughs> than you actually, you know, hear it or see it because you don't need to hear the schmickin' and the schmackin' and the schmackin' in my mouth, right? Um, so for texture, 
here, I'm going to actually give it a five out of five. Surprisingly, they pick the kind of veggies that when you bite into them fresh, like when you bite into them raw, there's still enough of a softness to them that the crunch is not unpleasant. And even with the pecans or pecans, however you want to pronounce it, you know, they're also like a softer kind of nut where when you bite into it, again, it's not like you're chewing gravel for fun. <laughs> so five out of five for texture. For flavor, you know, it's a wrap. Even that honey mustard drizzle, like it's a very basic honey mustard flavor. You know, there's there's nothing like exciting to it. Like I feel like if you had added maybe a little bit of vinegar or, you know, a little bit of spice, like something to it that would make it more interesting, then I would have more to say about it. But, you know, as it stands, it's just good in that middling kind of way where it's not that it's bad, it's just that there's nothing interesting about it. So I'm going to give it a three out of five for flavor. Uh, the thing that does elevate it is the dried cranberries. I just really love the sweetness that the cranberries bring. And of course, I think cheddar always goes really well with fruit. So the last ranking we have, repeatability, would I eat it again? The answer is no, but if you love wraps, I think you'll love this. Getting into my final thoughts, I think Green Chef nailed the recipes in terms of instructions and the ingredients they combined. And the ingredients are important because when I choose my meals, I do it based just on the photo and name. I don't look at all of the ingredients in it because I wanna be surprised. So it was a nice surprise that with all of the meals I tried here, there wasn't any ingredient that felt out of place, except maybe that spicy powder for the meatloaf. I tasted more almond from the almond flour than I did any of that spice, so it didn't ruin anything, it just felt unnecessary. I had no issue with the quality of the ingredients or the packaging, nothing was leaking or damaged, and as far as weights go, it's the most accurate service I've reviewed up to this point. The price falls in the same range as a lot of them with a discount, so it was affordable, and the portions were great. Comparing it to Cook Unity, which is the last service I reviewed, I think Green Chef's servings are bigger. So my experience with Green Chef was really positive overall, and I definitely recommend it as being right up there with every other popular meal kit. That said, I have three gripes. First, while my meals were great, I did have to skip two weeks to find enough recipes I wanted. And I know that's just a me thing, so it isn't a complaint necessarily. Their menus are diverse. I just feel like they swing wildly in terms of sometimes having something for everyone and other times mainly only having stuff for people who like a specific flavor profile or ingredient. I do like that they have breakfast items as regular planned meals since breakfast was only an add-on with other meal kits I tried, but that's also a part of what limits the menu each week. I'm not sure how many people use a service like this for breakfast as much as lunch and dinner, so I'd rather see less eggs on toast and more of everything else. My second gripe, which is actually a gripe, is that four meals is the max plan. It doesn't matter that you can add additional meals because the discounts that apply to your plan don't apply to them. But my last and most serious complaint is about their claim that their ingredients come pre-prepped. For things like sauces and herbs, they're not any more pre-prepped than other services. They're just pre-packaged or pre-made, which is not the same thing. And for the rest of the ingredients, nothing was prepped in my case. Now, I won't call it false advertising because they do clarify in the FAQs what they mean by pre-prepped, but I'll absolutely call it misleading because it's not what the rest of us mean. Maybe it's just me, but when I think about prep work, it's mainly about produce, having to chop and slice and peel. I'm not really counting having to blend two seasonings together. And I'm sure they know a lot of people interested in these services hate prep work. So claiming that your ingredients come pre-prepped can definitely give your company a boost. When I saw this picture of cubed squash or whatever it is in the section where it mentions food coming ready to use, I was excited because it led me to think that they peel and cut stuff up for you. And they know that's what you'd think. You won't convince me they don't, but it seems they also know not to state that produce is a part of what they prep for you. They seem careful to say the pre-prepped ingredients include sauces, marinades, and spice blends with no mention of fruit and vegetables. Even in the FAQs, they hype up how many of their ingredients come pre-prepped, including their sauces, dressings, and spices, which again are just pre-made or pre-packaged. My point is that, in my humble opinion, they're using the word pre-prepped in a misleading way relative to how consumers define it and in terms of what these meal kits typically provide. And they do say later in the FAQs that there's prep work involved, including dicing, chopping, peeling, and grating, which proves they know what prep work actually means. To be fair, maybe there are recipes where they prep the produce for you, but none of them were mine. And yes, some produce doesn't benefit from being pre-prepped in terms of freshness, but you're telling me they couldn't even 
even peel and chop my carrots? So in the end, Green Chef seems like a great service, but the lady doth protest too much, methinks. Either way, let me know what your experience has been with Green Chef. A link to their site is in the box, and feel free to post in my community tab which service you want me to try next. Thanks so much for watching MBM, and I'll see you snackies when I'm backies.